thanks for watching our video today we're going to course convert a 80 to 81 clock um, so we'll just dive right into it the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the needles off and they basically they they're held on and you can just pull them off and if you can't pull them off a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a pair of side cutters and without squeezing you just put it underneath the needle and pull outward and that usually pops them right off the hour and second hand our hour and minute hands usually come right off pretty easy too and then the last one is the second hand or the hour hand and it's cantankerous and you just kind of got to get under it a little bit and give it a little nudge you move it around get a little flat screwdriver move it around a little bit it should come off you just don't want to open it up getting it apart if you open it up then it doesn't want to stay when you put it back on the car Okay, so we've got our hands off the clock, and uh, the first thing we do is open the can up. Well, the only way to open the can up is to take the face off. And so you take the face off right here, you can see where our little tabs on the face, and you get underneath those tabs and you try to open them up like that. And go to the next one. And straighten up just a little bit. Okay, and if you wiggle that, it should come loose. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you can see the face only go on the clock one way. So you've got your face like that. Now you need to open the can up. To open the can up, you can see where they staked it from the factory. There's usually three stakes, one here, here, and here. And we're just going to take a pair of uh, pliers and try to straighten that up a little bit. That should come out okay so now there's the can there's the original movement now to get the movement off the plate off the clock plate you want to pry these retainers off and you just, again stick a little screwdriver underneath of it you're gonna, you're gonna get new retainers with your kit and I'll tell you when you're done You'll learn to hate these retainers because they're kind of hard to get back on. Okay, now once you get the clock off or the retainers off, the clock will pull right off the mounting face, and you're pretty much done as far as disassembling the clock. But you want to take the rubber pads out because you're going to put new pads in it as well. just peel right out and they're just like little vibration pads okay and you'll notice the little brass cups that came off as well they sit on the movement like this right there they sit on the movement then you've got your cushion which is mounting your face so one of the first things that uh, you need to be worried about with, with doing a clock is you need to make sure you use the right set of gears. When you buy the quartz kit, and this is the quartz kit, you get two sets of gears. You get a black set of gears and you get a red set of gears. Now, how do you know which gears to use? It's real simple. If you count the number of teeth on the reset pinion, uh, ten tooth pinion takes the black gears so we want to chuck all the red stuff and just keep the black on the table so we don't need the red gears now we're going to take the movement out of the package it's a basic movement we're going to use that set to 12 volts you know a lot of times what I like to do before I even fire them up or put them in the clock is just throw the second hand back on the end of it and what it's going to do, it's going to let me know this is a good movement. Uh, you just clip the ground on here, you click 12 volts on the stud, and you can see the clock starts working. So if you go back through the instruction sheet that comes with the clocks, what you'll find out is this, 
you have to reuse this clutch and this is a thrust washer right here but you'll see here that this has a clutch and what you want to do is you want to turn that in your hand and make sure it's not stuck uh, so anyway we're going to go back so we're going to start putting stuff back together so we're going to put the clutch back on and it should line up with the little drive gear on the movement then we're going to go put the next gear on and then we're going to use the black gears if you look right here this gear will fall I probably took this apart too fast for everybody that gear falls right in place right there and then you've got this little idler gear that goes right there now for the most part that clock is ready to start put to ready start to be mounted on the uh, uh, plate so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and put your little insulators back on the studs And then we'll just set that off to the side for right now. Uh, next thing we want to do is put our grommets in our plate and they just widge it in like this. And you see them coming through. And remember that part where I told you you're going to hate the uh, retainers because I'm about to show you why. So now we're ready to mount the movement uh, back on the, the movement plate. And the best way to do that is to look at this gear right here and know that that's the gear that drives off the uh, little pinion gear. And so you can just take your take your uh, little new grommet and force it down through there. And if you want to, you can kind of hold down on it and turn it and you can see that, the, that it moves. It's kind of hard to pull out and turn, but, but it is. It's making good contact. So... Now here's where you start hating things. These little retainers, I don't know how well you can see them. These little retainers have three ears on them. And those three ears are supposed to lock down over top of that little plastic stud that's sticking through. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, can that be a tough nut to crack. So, um, what we'll do is usually I'll take a little socket like this that I know will fit over top of that and fit in there. I think this is a 530 second socket and you've got to do this and push down hard enough to make it lock in place. Alright, so now we're mounted. We've got our reset working. You can actually hold it like that. You can see the gears turn. Uh, one of the tricks to the clocks that we do that uh, you know because a lot of the older clocks were painted on the inside and if you stick this back in the can back in the can uh, the way it is uh, you can look here and see it goes that away but what you end up with is is this has to scuff this uh, this area of the plate and you know I've never liked that because number one it seems like they need to take this and just do it just a little bit like that and what that does, that creates a friction, a constant, like a spring-loaded friction inside of there. And uh, I'll get it in there right again. Okay, and then now what I'm doing is I'm going to eyeball where that's going to fit. And I like to go in there and scuff it with some sandpaper. So let me find me a little piece of sandpaper here. And that's just going to remove the coating. Um, the older clock housings, when, they, when you used to get them, they had paint inside of here. If you put the clocks together, uh, if you put them together, a lot of times, thank you. A lot of times, uh, the paint will keep the uh, ground contact from making contact inside the can. You just you don't need to do a lot. You know, you just need to scuff it a little bit. If there's a coating, which are yeah, or paint, you know, make sure you remove it. Just get it cleaned off inside of there a little bit, so that that thing makes a good ground. There we go. And, 
All right, so now we're ready to put this back in the can. And it only go in the can one way, and I keep trying to put it in backwards. You can see where I'm scuffed on the inside now. My contactor is going to make contact in that little area. You put this in. You try to line it up with the stud. With the stud hole, excuse me. And you hold it down. Now, the same way you took it apart, you bend the ears over. And once you usually get two of the ears bent back over, you can then do the sides. And so we've got the two ears bent back over. Our stud needs to be centered. If you look at the back, you need to make sure that that stud's not touching that can. Make sure that insulating grommet is in position. This one appears to be fine. So anyway, what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our face and remount it. Reset knob through there. Put the tabs back where they came out of. And you want to try to fold those tabs back over. So you take your little pliers and fold that one. Now you can't fold them all the way down by hand, so usually what I'll do is I'll take a little screwdriver and I'll fold it the rest of the way with the screwdriver. You can go through the light hole here, and there you have it. Now we put our hand on. Now this is where you get another education. It's a little trick. You always want to set the hands on the clock at 12 and 12, and there's a reason for that. The reason is if you set them at like 12 and 20 after or 12 and 25 till they won't run in unison when they when it comes around on the hour now the second hand you can kind of feel it and you just want to push it and it will snap in place now the last test go back with your power on your stud do not hit the power to your housing ground your housing and your clock should start running so there you have it. That's how you quartz convert a clock. Everything is exactly the same on a 1968 to 1982 clock. The only difference is all clocks after 1969, from the 1970 production all the way up until uh, 1981, uh, you'll, you, you have a, a, a tin tooth pinion on the reset knob. Everything prior to that, 1963, 64, 66, 7, 8, 69, all used a 12 tooth pinion. And this is why there's a difference between the uh, standard and uh, on the standard movement clocks. There's two different movements that were available, uh, uh, and that's because the gears were different, just like we observed here today. Uh, gosh, can't think of anything else. So uh, if you got any questions, uh, you can contact me at support at wilcoxcorvette.com. Um, if you get a chance, visit the website. There's all kinds of tech videos on the website, on the website and uh, uh, hopefully you'll find one that will help you. Thank you and have a good day.